This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Much has been written, spoken about, announced regarding current and future Brexit negotiations, about deals which have been made and which have not been made, and it can be quite confusing when you read those articles in the press as to what is actually happening. And so today I'd like to first of all give you a brief synopsis as to what is substantially important. And then I will talk a little bit about what the Bible has to say about all of this. But first of all, let me read to you from an article by the Spiegel Online, dated November 16, saying this. Theresa May has reached a deal, and we are talking about a 585-page document, a withdrawal agreement, with the European Union to prevent a hard exit from the bloc. But events of recent days make clear that months of drama in Brussels pales in comparison to the one unfolding in London now. Those who believe the deal goes too far, and those who believe it doesn't go far enough, are suddenly united in opposition to a prime minister who is growing increasingly isolated. The stage is set for a showdown the likes of which British politics has never seen before. If the deal falls through, the country would be pushed out of the EU boat without a life jacket, with unpredictable economic and social consequences. And so this opinion is being echoed by many saying, oh, we have to have a deal because otherwise it's going to be a disaster, the worst possible solution. But not everybody would agree with that. The Week wrote on November 16, Theresa May's government lies in ruins. This was bound to happen. There is widespread agreement that if approved, the deal would put Britain in the worst position imaginable. It would leave the United Kingdom in a kind of limbo beholden to European laws and facing significant financial obligations, about which we are going to talk in a moment. This is why the deal is almost certain to fail in Parliament. May has already lost. The Guardian talked about the additional financial obligations, potentially, on November 17. They wrote, Brussels was making clear that if the UK wants an extension of the transition during which it is tied to the EU economic system, but with no say over its rules, it must last at least a further year. A year-long extension would cost about £10 billion pounds on top of the £39 billion pounds of the divorce bill, which has already been agreed to. That kind of a concept, the debt is enormous. So Deutsche Welle wrote on November 22, because now there was pressure on the EU and Britain before they meet this coming Sunday, that they have a preliminary understanding as to what the transition period would be all about. And so it says the EU and the UK have reached a preliminary political deal on their post-Brexit relationship. That's a 26-page text, which is not legally binding, but it still requires the endorsement of the 27 remaining EU members. And both sides have agreed that the post-Brexit transition period, listen carefully, may be extended from its current end date of December 31, 2020 for up to one or two years, meaning another 10 or 20 billion pounds, which Britain would have to pay to the EU. Nevertheless, the Spiegel Online wrote, in reading this text, one might think that the Brits want to join the EU rather than leaving it. And BBC News explained on November 23 what this is really all about. They say the political declaration is a separate document to the 585-page withdrawal agreement. The withdrawal agreement is legally binding. The political declaration is not. It sets out broad aspirations for the kind of relationship the UK and the EU will have after Brexit. Some of the wording of it is non-committal and allows both sides to keep their options open. So the 
BBC news article goes on to say, so what's going to happen now? EU leaders meet on Sunday to sign off on the withdrawal agreement and the political declaration. So both of them, assuming that France and Spain and other countries agree. Come to that in a moment. Mrs. May starts a process of getting MPs back to the deal, or back the deal. Most are currently against it. If MPs back the deal, it then has to be ratified by the European Parliament. And then the UK leaves the EU on March 29, and trade talks on the future relationship start. But Deutsche Welle also wrote on November 23 that Spain wants a commitment in writing from the UK on the status of Gibraltar in the Brexit agreement, so it would not have to vote against the final deal. It says we have demanded that it be published by the British authorities before the European Council on Sunday. Now, of course, they cannot veto it, but they can simply not agree to it. And then it falls through. And then you have France and other countries. They also argue about some fishing rights, which they want to have from the UK, and which the UK at this point is not willing to give them. So are they going to renege, or are the UK... Is the UK going to renege? That will remain to be seen. Express wrote on November 23 that if the EU approves the draft on Sunday, it will clear the way for Mrs. May's biggest battle yet, passing it through the House of Commons, British Parliament. The date is estimated around December 7. If the Commons votes the deal down, one of the potential outcomes would be to hold another public referendum. Very slim possibility. Or they could try to get a little more time and go back to the negotiating table. Possible. Or they hold another general election, which nobody wants. Or they leave the EU without a deal, which is a distinct possibility. This would mean an immediate Brexit. The UK would cut all ties with Europe. Now, what has the Bible to say about all of this? The Bible does tell us that there is going to be some kind of an agreement, especially between Germany, maybe leading the EU, and the UK, or Great Britain. Now, it's not clear whether this agreement refers to a Brexit agreement, or whether it refers to some kind of an independent trade agreement, or whatever it may be. But in any event, the Bible also tells us that this agreement even though it's nice on paper, will not hold. Will not hold. And then Britain will try to get help from Germany. And Germany will not, cannot help Britain. Why? Because, has, because God has decreed that that would be so. And so the Bible tells you very clearly that Britain is going to leave the EU. A Brexit in one way or another will take place. Now, we have prepared several booklets. They are free, absolutely free, without any cost or obligation. And I'd like to offer them to you, which, goes, which go into these issues in much detail. The fall and rise of Britain and America. Because, believe it or not, the Bible says that before Christ returns, Britain and America will fall. Completely and totally fall. And then after Christ's return, they will rise again. And this booklet explains as to how that is going to be possible. Another one, the Great Tribulation and the Day of the Lord. When Britain has left the EU, it will ultimately find itself attacked by the EU. And I'm talking about militarily. And that is actually part of the beginning of the Great Tribulation. And it looks like this is just around the corner, especially which, with the concept that the EU wants to have now a very strong, real military army. And then finally, Europe in prophecy, the unfolding of end-time events. And this booklet also tells you very clearly from the pages of the Bible what is going to happen in the very near future and how all of this, what we are dealing with right now, has a bearing and why the Brexit negotiations and what is going to come are extremely important in the light 
of biblical prophecy. As I said, those booklets are free of charge, without any follow-up or obligation. I encourage you to write for them, and we will be happy and pleased to send you free copies. Thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.